Howdy, it is I, Junk. Back again, surprise, on a Monday. I wanted to record this weekend, it got too busy. Also, I'm going to be probably traveling for most of next weekend. I'm going to New York City for work in the middle of this week. If you're in New York City and uh, going to be around there the second half of this weekend to the weekend, you want to hang out, leave me a message, you know, let's see what we can do. And I'm going to re-record this. I recorded this before, but it just took 18 minutes. And I know I talked too much to begin with. Let's try to turn over a new leaf and be a little bit snappier, huh? Let's get to the, let's get to the good stuff quicker. I figured this out because in watching the premiere of the last video, I saw people would like pop in and leave until the gameplay started. <laughs> so I promise we're going to keep this very short. Two main things I want to talk about. One of them is going to be self-evident in the video, which is, yeah, how broken are the flamethrower weapons? I've got a couple games I want you to see. One of them in particular, the second game, the Yamantau, is where I was like, oh, we have a problem. We have an actual problem. This is not just broken because it's new. This is broken in a way the game could not possibly have intended. So that's one thing. The second thing, I'll put a link to the petition below. This is Manny's petition asking War, War Robots to make some changes. Manny's going through his own kind of drama with Pixonic right now, where it sounds like he's been kicked out of not just the mentor program, but the creator program. They're slightly different. Creator program, you make videos on YouTube, and you've got at least 500 followers, and they give you free stuff to your personal account. Which, again, if you're new, I'm not in it, so please don't ask me for giveaways. I wish I could do it, but I'm not in the creator program, much to my chagrin. <laughs> Actually, I don't care that much. Um... But that's one thing. On top of that, there's a mentor program for really big creators where they give you a battle rec account. And what Manny actually said was he was kicked out, like he was banned from his battle rec account, which could have only meant he was kicked out of the mentor program. But then he said that he wouldn't be able to do giveaways, which sounds like they kicked him out of the creator program as a whole. And he was very vague about what he did. He said he said some things that were incorrect in a video about the D-gems. So I don't know what exactly happened. And he can fill in those details for us at some point if he wants to. But that drama, it, it's coincidentally timed. He said he was kicked out before the petition was released. But it is interesting timing that he announces it immediately after the petition comes out. Doesn't seem totally accidental. It seems like there's some, some trouble in paradise between Manny and Pixonic. And I can't tell if this is like a full-on divorce or if this is just Pixonic flexing to show it. It has the strength in the relationship. And I guess only time will tell on that front. Certainly, I'm glad he's going to keep making videos. I think the community's better with him in it. His petition, that said, yeah, I do support the idea of a petition. Some people are going to say it's not going to change anything. Yeah, but, you know, trying is better than not trying, and nothing works until it does. Like, eventually, everything you try fails until something works, and you don't know what's, what that's going to be. Because it's like that saying, it's always the last thing, it's always the last place you look. Well, it's always the last thing you try, and you don't know what that is until you try everything and something works. So let me open up the petition really briefly. I supported almost everything in it. There's a couple things I didn't, and it's much easier for me to say what I didn't support in the interest of time than it is to say what I did. You'll be able to open the petition and see what you want to support in it, and you'll see what I supported. Let me open up my email here. The high class, high class uh, organization we got going on here. I wasn't ready for this. Okay. Uh, I don't think pilot skills... Uh, resetting when you move into a new bot is a big deal. If we're going to ask Pixonic for things, let's focus on the things that actually matter. And having to retrain pilots when you move into a different robot, I don't care. I, I don't think we do it that much anyway, honestly. Didn't support the idea that you should be able to level up into ultimate equipment. That's kind of ridiculous for a few reasons. Number one, it makes ultimate editions less rare than limited editions because you can level into an ultimate, but you can't level into a limited which undermines the concept of an ultimate edition. I say just treat ult ultimate editions like limited editions, make them available on a black market chest of some kind. I also think that it doesn't necessarily do good things for new players because right now, at least the weapons that are good as ultimates are not the ones that are good in the regular editions. So it encourages new players to play weapons that are less good, even though they might not ever actually level up to the point where they get ultimate edition. So I just think it's, it's a bad idea. I don't care about the negative effects. <laughs> I don't. I think that we need better anti-control. If we have better anti-control and more ways to remove effects, I think effect duration would be fine and the amount would be fine. So the idea of we want better anti-control 
and we want shorter durations and we want fewer negative effects is going to tip the balance too far in the other direction where effects don't have meaning anymore. So better anti-control, I think, I think pick one or the other. I think better anti-control is the right solution. Supported the Titan change. Impact of drones, pilots, and battleships. I don't like limiting the, the power of pilot skills or drones or battleships because they're what makes it possible to play older robots right now. All you have, if you want to play a golem, is your pilot skills and your drone, right? So if you limit what those things can do, then suddenly this robot is unplayable that was a little bit playable before. Don't like that. Until every robot has three mod slots, don't ruin pilot skills. <laughs> and I didn't support the trade-off skills because I just don't care. There's like two or three trade-off skills that are actually used in any kind of real capacity. So, I, I, like, it, it was an item saying trade-off skills should stay. I just don't care. Support every single economy change. Support going against hackers. Support all the changes to matchmaking and tanking. I didn't support the test server change in, like, test server runs badly or not at all we need to fix the test server because they don't listen to the test server anyway so why do we care about fixing a test server that they're then going to ignore and release whatever they want like the fix would be actually listen to the people on the, on the test server and i see that like yeah the item says why not develop content with us for us take our concerns seriously yeah well make that the item then don't put test server runs badly or not at all like actually listen to the test server feedback should be the item and then if you want to put at the end of that it should it should run better great so it's the item is just mixed up in in our concerns and it it uh in some ways giving people the wrong advice or giving people advice in the wrong order is worse than no advice in my humble opinion. Other than that, I liked everything in the petition. I certainly hope you will too. And uh yeah, with that said, here we are. Just over 7 minutes and we're going to get into gameplay. So uh you're welcome. Let's go watch some games. Okay, we're on the canyon. Buckle up, buckaroo. It's about to get really real. And I'm going to start with the Shenlu. If I had gone, if I started with the Hellburner, I would have run to our secondary, which is the beacon by the bridge there on the left. When I'm not in a bot that's that fast, I want to go to center. And a lot of times now with the Shenlu, I like to go to center. You have a good deal of cover as you get there. And then you can teleport from that cover to take out enemies on their secondary. So I get in and uh, Strider was drawing fire for me there. Get behind a Dagon, he phases to get away from me, so I go over to get the finishing blow on this Lynx. Turn around to figure out what is going on with him, take him out. Then that Dagon who phased before, take him out. Uh, Crisis comes out of phase. Thank you for that, for the triple kill. An Ares and an Ocho drop in on their beacon. I decide to go to the Ares, get inside his shield for the rampage, and my ability ends, and I'm back in cover. Of course, the downside is... Now they're pretty keenly aware of where I am. <laughs> so I start moving. I see that they are contesting our secondary and I can't get up there in time. My ability isn't ready yet. So as soon as it's up, I teleport in Magnetar Kepri, which is not something that concerns me. And I get some shots into it to the last stand. A shotgun Skyros teleports behind me as I teleport behind the Kepri again. Managed to get the godlike on that Skyros. Avenger Lynx here. And we have a big old team Schmaz here. I get the assist on the Avenger Lynx. Teleport behind that Magnetar Kepri. I get beyond godlike, but we're about to get five capped. <laughs> so I want to take on that Aljun with my Seeker drone, but my ability ends. So I go back to center because we need a beacon. It's looking a little grim here. I think you would agree at this point. And I'm just trying to flip center. And they're uh, kind of spawn rating us a little bit now. I see I can't flip center because enemy Emuji comes in, Sonic Emuji. And he does a great deal of damage to me. But I then return the favor, teleport behind him, get a shield for the living legend. Manage to cap center, but the uh, subduer Kiri finishes the job, so I can play Kiri. Let's drop in one of the two Avenger Kiri's. This with the Pascal drone for durability. The other one has a Seeker on it. And I try to run in, and I'm just trying to stop this spawn raid from happening, but I'm trying to do something else too. I want to get the Kiri's attention, and I want to walk towards our home beacon, which is currently red because I want to have this fight on the home beacon and flip it. So it's one thing here. I'm going to pull a little move. I want to bait him off the beacon. I mean, off the bridge, but he won't go. So I'll just run under it. He's going to take on my teammates as I focus on getting to our home. I wanted to get his attention and pull him over here to have the fight over here. He decides he's going to have the fight against my teammates, which is fine because he's still not here. So I managed to get this flipped white and shortly we will have it flipped blue. Someone else, meanwhile, is getting center. He realizes now he's goofed. 
because he let me flip that beacon. And we went from being almost five cap to now having a four cap, uh, turning into a three cap now shortly. And you're gonna see Subduer Curie versus Avenger Curie. I generally like the, there's a reason why I run two Avenger Curies and no Subduer Curies right now. I just feel it's a much tougher, much tougher bot. Now, what to do next? I see that they are gonna go to their secondary and flip it back and they've got a, what looks like a Rook over there and something else. And they flipped our secondary and they're heading towards center. So I'm gonna protect what I've got before I go for something else. And I'm gonna go take on that Lynx in center. He manages to flip it white, but I get on the beacon before he can flip it any further. He tries to withdraw, but it's too little too late to get the kill. But I eat a whole lot of bendy bullets from that Eiffel. This is bad. They've got beacon bar advantage. They've got beacon advantage. I'm in a carry, but there's an Eiffel there. I'm gonna try to get to the other side of center because it'll give me a little protection if that Eiffel is still gonna go after me. And because I'm on the other side of center, now I decide I'm going to go contest their secondary. Let the Eiffel fight the guys on our secondary, and I'm going to go for theirs. And you see they've got a Rook and an Indra, and I've got a Kiri. But the Rook is three different weapons, and that's just... When I see three different weapons on a Rook, you're just telling me this is not a highly leveled Rook. And sure enough, it isn't. I can just empty my weapons into it. And I could take out a fully leveled Indra with these, no problem. Except I'm getting shot in the back by that Eiffel, and I go down, which means it's it's time, it's time to, uh, to start a fire with the mostly flamethrower Eiffel. I, I'm missing one of the betas. Titan Slayer on the Bendy Eiffel. The interface is to avoid the flames, which just allows me to get on the beacon before he can flip it, and Titan Slayer on the Indra. Triple kill there on Akiri, I believe. Now I drop the Thor mothership on that on that shielded bot. I thought it was maybe an Ophion, it was a Demeter. Either way, Thor lets me shoot through the shields for the rampage. And now the game is thinning out quite a bit. They're flipping center. But while I'm over here, I am going to flip their home beacon. I say home and secondary. Basically, the beacons that are farthest from the enemy are home, is, is the way I, I think of it. Okay. There goes an angler dropping in. He phases to avoid dying. I just go up in the air, draw back, toast him up for the godlike. And we're going to get over to the other side of the map. It's a three on three right now. Now two on three. I'm going to center. They drop in a Shenlu. The Shenlu is almost gone before he realizes what's happening and he phases. And the phase ends and I get to be on godlike. I think the, the phase shift module has been uh, mythologized out of all proportion to quote John Carmack. Gonna go here, get our secondary back again. It's three on two, and I've got to make a decision now, and I'm trying to decide, do I go after what's taking on my teammate or this Dagon that's shooting me from across the map? And as I'm thinking this through, the decision gets made for me. Luchador starts shooting at me. I said, well, if we're gonna do this now, we're gonna do this now. Drop the Thor mothership on him so he can't run away fast. And I'm gonna dash around here, put some fire on him, Titan Slayer, go after the Lynx, but he phases as soon as I get him to his last stand. Meanwhile, my teammate has dropped in his kid, and now it's two on two. Wait, three on two, sorry. Eiffel and Kid versus Lynx, Dagon, and Fenrir. Dagon, very short for this world. The Fenrir is walking towards their home beacon to flip it. I hit, they hit him with the mothership because there's gravity amps on it. Land on their secondary to flip it. And now it looks like a two-on-one, my kid teammate, walking towards our primary beacon, our home. So, this is kind of interesting. The Fenrir, it, it's not a bad play, it just doesn't work. He goes behind the, uh, goes behind that little rock formation to avoid the flames hitting him. But if, apparently, if you have a corner sticking out, you will get roasted up just the same. And he does, in fact, get roasted up just the same. Now there's two of us, none of them. I'm here to flip their home beacon, but there will not be time to do it because there's no enemy robots in the field, and I'm not even sure we had beacon bar advantage at any point in that game. I don't think we did. Let's take a look at the scoreboard because it is quite something. 10.3 million, four assists, 18 kills, and 10 beacons. Before they added assists, this is what I used to call a triple-double, and I still, I sort of think there is an argument for still calling it a triple-double because you don't really want uh. 10 assists, that's, that's, that's not good. 
So was it a good game? Yeah, it's a pretty good game. Um, that's uh, that's quite a few beacons there. <laughs> Quick flipping through here. The uh, just gonna flip through the game to see what was going on because there was that that rook made me think what who am I fighting? And it was three champions, three masters on either side. And in fact, uh, one of the champions on my side was at five thousand and five. So technically a champion, I would say. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not that we aren't all there at some point. But yeah, that was an intense game. And in games like that, I always wonder, would you be happier? Because people complain if you run things like the Flame Eiffel. And I'm thinking, well, number one, people run them against you. But number two, you know, half the time we're going to be teammates, right? And in a game like that, would it be better to say, sorry, guys, you all have to lose, even though I could turn this game around because of philosophical reasons? I'm not sure I agree with that. I'm not sure I think that's a good idea. But anyway, that's one game. Let's get into a second one. All right, we are on Yamantau, and uh, this is a game, I only had three of the Alpha Titan flame weapons when I did this, so I put them on the Ultimate Ao Ming. And you'll see why I wanted to show you this game. It's not that the game itself is so necessarily educational, except for a very educational, like, 15 seconds. Drop the Curie, use the ability so I can get that first beacon cap, because you never know if you're going to need that beacon to make it to first place. And use the ability again to get onto the secondary and do a little bit of cover. And there is a Prisma, I'm assuming, Crisis shooting me. And that makes me feel some kind of way. Now, lately I've been using the Hellburner to run to their home and contest it there. Based partially on this game, where I had a Curie kind of slow walk me over. A little help there from a friendly Kepri. And they're shooting, but I'm still coming for them. I'm coming for them. Those snipers will not be shooting at my team very so very shortly. I see they got a Weber Fafnir there up on the left. Very strong assassin build, but not one that wants to get into a lot of close quarters fighting. Some Sonics from an Angler. And now the team, I have their attention. <laughs> I'm going to be taking a lot of damage here very quickly. Oh, I see there's an Emuji shooting at me. There's the Fafnir. Let's, let's take care of that little Fafnir problem while, we, while we're looking at it. I see him getting some frost rocket shot into me, and that Ocho is pushing me, because there has to be an Ocho pushing me. They've got a Hellburner with the frost rockets, Sonic, Angler, and I think, what does the Ocho have? It's like, it was shotguns, well, it's a, he's gone now, but the godlike. I'm surprised I've lasted this long. Ophion lands, I don't have, uh, my Avengers are reloading, but my turrets managed to do most of the work for me. Take him out, they got an Erebus over there. And the Erebus goes down for the Living Legend. See, one Ophion lands, one Ophion takes off. And I'm still going towards their, their center. And I like when there's two Ophions. Not that I like Ophions, but I like that they're not going to sit here on this beacon and contest it with me because I want to cap the beacon. Because I want to see something. They got a Hawk. Comes in to contest, but gives me another Living Legend instead. Now an Angler runs in. I take out the Ophion in the back, but the Angler, as he phases in, takes me out with Sonics and Shotguns, and I drop in the Flame Ao Ming, and let's just watch this for a second. Kill. Double. Triple. Rampage. Godlike. Why do they say it's broken? I think I think the flames are working just fine to me. Um, yeah. Beyond Godlike and Living Legend there. And then I'm almost dead, but I start regenerating and I start putting the flames on this in the air ether and get the Titan Slayer before two Titans spawn in and take me out. So yeah, you could say, one could say, one could have the opinion, the flame weapons are kind of broken. So Ultimate Avenger Curie dropping in here with the Seeker drone. And I'm sort of torn. We're contesting their Beacon B, but I feel some kind of way about these two Titans on the left. So I'm going to put some fire on them at first, I decide. And I go after the Sirius, because my teammate was fighting the Sirius. Back up a bit. And I'm still thinking, do I go right or do I contest with the Titans? And I just decide at this point, you know what? Let them fight on the secondary. I'm going back for the primary again. So he hops over, and they clearly know where I'm going. Sirius knows where I'm going, and I just kind of turn around and put some put some Avenger fire to it, and he just doesn't follow. And I guess he just decided he didn't want the smoke. He's had enough of this enough of this uh, harassment. 
And I can understand that. If somebody did to me what that Ao Ming did on the home beacon, I probably wouldn't want to chase him either. He does come out eventually. And as soon as I flip the beacon, I get some Titan support. He must have been wait waiting for his weapons to reload, but that was long enough for me to flip the beacon and have two friendly Titans spawn in. So that did not work on his part. And uh, it's looking a little grim for them now on the beacon bar with the four cap. So I decided I'm going to chase the nearest bot, which is this... This, uh... Oh, I guess it's this nether now. I guess they crossed. I thought it was the nether I was chasing. And he just goes down to hide over the edge. And now I'm just on some petty stuff. There's no reason to do this other than pettiness, but... <laughs> I drop the turrets and somebody else drops the, uh, the mothership. I only get the assist on it, but it's probably fine because the turrets wouldn't have had time to end him before game is up. Victory. Let's take a look at the scoreboard. 8.6 million, two assists, 18 kills, and four beacons. We had a living legend to get to their home and a living legend on their home. But yeah, that was three Titan flamethrowers, not four. I didn't have the fourth. I got a fourth now because they, they still won't give me the second beta. So I've got the fourth flamethrower now. And it was... Can you imagine if this was domination mode? I mean, at least this was beacon rush. And they had a chance to spawn in somewhere else in theory. Like, in domination mode, that's just... The, that is that is game breaking. It is it is a game breaking weapon. They need to nerf it immediately. Anyway, let's get into another game. Okay, we're here on Carrier, and I'm going to start with Shenlu. Don't always start with Shenlu, but on Carrier you can kind of get away with it because it lets you mix up in the in the middle pretty quickly. Because uh, it is it is a long map, right? It's just just a long map that's very narrow, and I start off salty that I don't get credit for the first beacon. Fair enough. Okay. And I'm kind of like, my mindset is, well, fine. I'm not even going to try to get the second beacon. You know what? You guys want beacons. I'm going to go get some kills. Have all the beacons you want. I don't even need beacons. Beacons are dumb. So, teleport behind a raven. Raven jumps, but I've got a seeker drone, so I'm just waiting for it to come down so it can get shot. I'm getting shot by this Goss Lynx. Well, that, that's a choice. Get the kill on that. Teleport behind this Ophion. Ophion, double kill. And looking for another target, Ocho runs in, but my ability is about to end. Teleported back to our secondary. Just take a quick glance. I'm not confused about where our home is. I want to take a glance to see nobody ran under it. Turn around back again, and that Ocho has Brutals. You remember from the uh, from the Fafnir era? And was there a sale on the Lynx in the store? There's so many Lynx these days. Uh, I see a Lynx here. Now, I'm going to go teleport off this beacon. I would rather take out the Lynx. Ow barrel in the face. I'd rather take out the Lynx than cap the beacon, because when the Lynx is gone, I can go back up there and cap it anytime I want to. Like, say, right now, I go back up, there's his friend, his friend goes down, and now, can I cap the beacon? No, I can't. My ability ends. I'm not allowed to cap beacons in this game. All right, then I gotta go down here where there is an Ocho. There's that Ocho with the Frutals, I'm guessing, and he goes down. Manage to restore. I can, I can defend a beacon, I just can't cap any. Caught up in the gravity amp. I still teleport to center. Oh, what a shock. Another Lynx. How original. I haven't seen a Lynx for so long. Beyond godlike on that Lynx. And uh, managed to flip the beacon to white. But I'm taking a lot of damage from over there. Get my living legend. I see I just crawl into range. I'm teleporting. I don't know what it is. And it is an Ocho. Or was. Living legend there as I walk as I walk under their secondary. See there's an Ophion looking at me. My ability ends. I get teleported back to our secondary. Turn around. And there's an invader. Well, this it's not capping a beacon, so I'm allowed to do it. Another living legend there. Get lifted up, so now I know they have a Newton, but I don't see the Newton. So Newton just decided to lift me up. I gotta say, uh, general advice on Newton plate, don't do that. <laughs> Take out a Lancelot there in the back. Shooting now at an Ojun. Is that an ultimate? Kind of like an ultimate, but there's so many weapon effects I can't tell. Probably not, I guess. And again, lifted by what I guess is a Newton. And I'm just going to teleport blindly to what's over here. I think that was an Ophion? I'm not sure. It just exploded in front of me. Ability ends back to my secondary. <laughs> like Typhon taking some pot shots at me. Crossing here under center. And what I'm thinking about is like, they know where I am. They're all over there. Let's go see who this lonely friend is. Hey, it's the Newton. It's a Newton with one two, three, four different types of weapons. 
shockingly, it is not that strong. I've seen a lot of those. Uh, let's just put everything on, on it and see what happens. I teleport over here into a mess of people, and I keep shooting at the Sirius. Teleport behind him again, but I can tell my ability is going to end pretty soon. And here we are. Back where we started. I'm going to cross under this bridge again, because there is a big collection of them over there, and I would like to work a little bit more on that Sirius. I don't know what's up there. The risk of a blind teleport. Teleport behind a luchador and uh, in front of a whole bunch of enemies. And uh, yeah, that could have been a great choice. It just wasn't. And I see there's someone crawling around our home. So I drop in the Eiffel, the flame Eiffel, to see if I can do something about it. When their Eiffel goes up, I realize this is a chance to take out an Eiffel. I go up and just focus my flames. He dashes back, but not quite far enough. And I get the Titan Slayer. Turn around, I see the Sirius coming to our secondary. Let's get rid of him. Titan Slayer. And I don't need to do this, but I drop the Thor on the on the Typhon, disabling his shield. Triple kill as I go to their secondary. Their Sir and a second Sirius comes over, and I go up in the air, toast up that Sirius. Another dashes towards me to get away from the flame, so I just take out an Erebus instead. Yeah, godlike on the Erebus. Thor Mothership kicks in. Ophion is the Beyond Godlike. And that Nether who thought he was getting away is the Living Legend. It's like a, that was a Hawk, I think. I took it another Living Legend on. And, oh, Flame versus uh, Shield. Not a good deal for the Shield, since the Flames will bypass it. Titan Killer on the Arthur. Gonna go to Cap. Because they still have Beacon Bar advantage. And I think... I'm guessing that's a tier by the... Paint job? Correct me if I'm wrong, because it looked like a leech there for a second, but I think that's a tier paint job, right? The red and white, the, the rescue kind of paint job. So now I think we've officially taken over the beacon bar advantage. We have the beacon advantage, and uh, yeah, if I'm the red team player, I might be a little concerned at this point. I have some, I have some concern. So what do you do if you're the red player in this situation, as often I am? I, you know, I say go blaze of glory, man. You're not going to, this is never going to work out. It's a full team against you. Uh, just try to get in as much damage as you can and end the game and get, into, and get into another one where you have a better, better matchup. He takes some shots at me. I take some shots at him. Comes up in the corner. I try to shoot the flames because the flames will go around those corners as we've seen a little bit. Get the assist, but not the kill. Start dashing towards mid and he drops something in. I think I'm not going to get over there in time, so I try to drop a Kiri. To get over it but i <laughs> time runs out anyway and i end up i forget i'm gonna drop under <laughs> the deck so let's check out the scoreboard here 9.9 9 million three assists 22 kills and four beacons capture 22 is a lot of kills actually how many kills is 22 that's a lot well it's not just more than the enemy team got it's more than everyone else got put together like li my limited math skills i believe I got more kills than everyone else put together. So that's a pretty good game. I don't want to say it's a carry, but, uh, you know, I was, this is, maybe this was a strategy by my teammates. They knew that I was going to be salty if I didn't get that first beacon. So they were like, let's make him mad and he can take it out on, on the reds. In which case, um, dang, I guess you guys deserve the win. Good strategy. Uh, so yeah, if you've made it to the end of this, unexpected week weekday video thank you if you are a dog or cat at home alone which you probably are because it's a weekday it's a work day and you're waiting for your parents to get home i'm sure you're a good puppy or kitty they're going to bring you a treat when they come back i will talk to you again really soon although probably not this weekend we'll see i'm going to be in new york for stuff so we will see i'll be busy but really soon later